So the other day, I was trolling people on Twitter, as I do, and I dropped a meme. I thought it was a throwaway comment. It was just a base-level troll. I didn't really think too much about it. But later that day, a big story broke, and it made me stop and really think about it. Now, this rabbit hole got a little deep, so I wrote some notes, and I was about to record a video. Then I rewrote it. Then I scrapped it and rewrote it again. The more I dug, the worse it got. This might seem a little long, but stick with me for a few minutes. I assure you, this is way darker and more disturbing than you can imagine. Very few people have put the pieces together. The Democrat Party is solely focused on dividing the country through manufactured racism. And it started hundreds of years ago. This video was going to start with a reaction to the Scott Adams, you know, the Dilbert cartoon guy. Scott Adams did a tweet a few days ago. We were going to start there, but that's not where this story should start. Let's pretend it started when Trump announced he was running for president. As he went down that escalator in Trump Tower, he made the announcement and everything changed. At the top of the escalator, he was a TV personality. He was a top-rated TV star with The Apprentice. He was a best-selling author with Art of the Deal. And he was a huge player in property development. Everyone wanted to be Trump. He was stinking rich. He had extremely attractive wives. And he flew everywhere in private jets. Rap stars name-dropped him thousands of times. He was a cultural icon. Everyone loved Donald Trump. But at the bottom of that escalator, he was a racist, tyrant, misogynist, hate-filled monster. What changed? Well, he went against the Democrats. Democrats always project. They accuse their enemies of the crimes they actually commit. So now Trump's a racist. They use the full force of the media to lie, mislead, and obfuscate the truth. Democrats always play the race card to manipulate people. Now, most people don't know this, but the KKK was founded by Democrats. I am constantly surprised how they played the Uno reverse card and made everyone believe Republicans are the racists. Do you know how the Republicans got started? It was in Ripon, Wisconsin. There was a small group of people, including Abraham Lincoln, that were basically sick of the Democrats passing slavery and segregation laws. The Republican Party was created with the primary goal to go against Democrats and the Democrat policies of redlining, lynching, segregation, slavery, Jim Crow, and even the KKK. The KKK does exist. Republicans wanted to end that. Now, some of you may say that the Democrats used to be racist, but the parties flipped and blah, blah, blah. That's just a lie. It's easy to prove it's a lie. Robert Byrd was an extreme racist, and he was an extreme Democrat. He founded a local group of the KKK in West Virginia. He recruited hundreds of members. In the KKK, he was promoted up to the rank of exalted Cyclops. Whatever the hell that means. Kind of sounds like a big deal, though. He was elected as a congressman in West Virginia for six years. Then he was elected as a state senator. Eventually, he was the Senate Majority Leader. And even to this day, he remains the longest-serving U.S. Senator in history. From the Klan to Senator Majority Leader. Now, the Senate Majority Leader is the third in line for president in case of a disaster. As a representative in government for over 50 years and a racist Democrat the entire time. Robert Byrd recently passed. And because he was so much a part of the Democrat Party, several prominent Democrats spoke at his eulogy. Bill Clinton... Barack Obama, and yep, even Joe Biden. Now, this KKK leader wasn't in the distant past. This was in 2010. Okay, okay, but that was the past. 
Trump is bad, Republicans bad, they hate black people. Well, if you watch MSNBC or CNN or The View, that's all you're going to hear. Who was the only president to guarantee funding for HBCUs? Um, sorry, HBCUs are historically black colleges and universities. I'm not sure why we still have segregation for black colleges, but we do. And it was Trump that gave them funding. He gave them about $40 billion in funding so they wouldn't have to come back year after year after year and beg for more money. Biden has since reduced that funding. It's now slightly above $2 billion. Go look it up. These are facts. Okay, let's just jump to modern day. How about just a few days ago when a sitting congressman, Hank Johnson, Democrat from Georgia, who just happens to be one of the dumbest people on the planet, he got famous for asking, if we had too many military bases to Guam, would it tip over and capsize? Uh, my fear is that uh, the whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over and, uh, and capsize. What a clown. Anyway, today, today he doubles down on stupidity by listing blacks, Jews, and gay people in Congress and saying that all the hate crimes are coming from people that look like Republicans. They find it hard to believe maybe they are in denial or they just simply uh, don't, uh, don't know. But the fact of the matter is that uh, domestic terrorism and hate crime is nothing new in this country. It has existed from the inception of this country. And it has been perpetrated by those who look like my friends on the other side of the aisle. And the victims have looked like me. And they look like Sheila Jackson Lee. And they look like Jerry Nadler and, uh, and Steve Cohen, uh, two Jews. And they've looked like Ms. Garcia, who one of my colleagues referred to as a young lady, Judge Garcia, um, they have looked like Ted Lou. They have looked like Mondaire Jones, LGBTQ. It has a specific focus on white supremacists. Why? White supremacist violence. Why? That's where the Hate crime has been coming from. That's the rise in hate crime. It was, it was so vividly illustrated, the rise in hate crime, to the world to see on January 6th of 2021. Those, those are triggers for us because we know what that means. The KKK, which was made up uh, in part of police officers and law enforcement officials, sheriffs, and uh, uh, people in the military. So the problem, my, my brothers on the other side of the aisle, I don't see any sisters over there, but the, the problem is real. And the people on this side of the aisle, we know it's real because we've been victimized by it throughout history. And the, so we've been the victims and the folks who've been the victimizers look like y'all. And maybe that's why you are not uh, willing to admit that this is a problem that needs to be addressed by this legislation. But I'm glad that we have the majority so that we can do something about it. Because when my friends on the other side of the aisle, uh, if they should ever claim the majority, we're going to be on the menu. And uh, it does not look good. So we're going to have to get out here and make sure that that doesn't happen. And with that, I yield back. You can tell he has no idea what he's talking about because he calls January 6th a hate crime. But another Democrat talking head on MSNBC has called the Republican Party a dime store front for a terrorist organization. I'm not being incendiary when I say this. I've been saying this for a long time, Stephanie. There is no Republican Party. They're a dime store front for a terrorist organization. You took an investigation into a federal attack, an attack on our federal government, and gave it to a journalist who is a supporter of terrorism. This is dangerous. Projection. 
This Muppet is furious that Tucker Carlson has about 40,000 hours of video surveillance from January 6th. I'm sure he's just concerned that the world is soon going to find out there was no insurrection. There never was. It's just more lies to divide the country. Once again, BLM and Antifa are clearly terrorist organizations. They've burnt down huge sections of this country. They've taken over highways, intersections, even police stations. They are the terrorists. They're domestic terrorists. But they get cover from the Democrat machine. Kamala set up a fund to provide bail money so BLM rioters could get back on the streets as quickly as possible and fulfill the Democrat plan of burning and looting cities in the name of St. George Floyd. There's more projections, just more projections. Democrats always blame their opposition for the crimes that Democrats commit. This isn't shocking. You can read all of this in The Rules for Radicals, a book by Saul Alinsky. It's a playbook for how the Democrats run their scam. You should definitely read that book. It's fascinating. And so is Saul Alinsky. He was a mentor for Hillary Clinton. You might find that interesting. So I've made a pretty good case for Democrats being racists. They always have been. But if you don't believe me, check out any Democrat-run city. The education levels are almost non-existent. The crime rate is very high. Drug use is off the charts. Shockingly, many Democrat cities are disproportionately populated by blacks. Now, speaking nationally, blacks are about 15% of the population. But in Baltimore, it's 61.6% that are black or African American. In Chicago, it's 29.2%. Detroit is 78%. Atlanta is 48%. And St. Louis is 44.9%. This is two, three, four, five times the national average. Now, these cities have voted Democrat for decades, and they keep getting worse. Do you think that's the plan? Democrat cities also have the highest number of Planned Parenthood centers. They specialize in abortions. No matter what they say, they provide millions of abortions per year. Do you want to guess who gets the most abortions in these Planned Parenthood centers? It's black women. Every year there are more black abortions than live births in this country. Are you sure Democrats don't have an agenda? Now, Planned Parenthood was started by a woman named Margaret Sanger. She believed in eugenics. Her stated goal was to remove as many black children as possible because she thought they were inferior and should not be breeding. I beg, I'm begging you, don't believe me. Open a new tab and Google Margaret Sanger and eugenics. It was referred to as the Negro Project. Even Google can't hide this fact. Planned Parenthood is one of the largest donors to the Democrat machine. Back to the subject of schools. There was a report recently that there are 23 schools in the Baltimore area where not one single school has one single student that can pass a math test. But they have violence. Check out any TikTok or Twitter feed and you'll see hundreds of videos of black kids fighting teachers. Black kids fighting white kids and black kids fighting other black kids. I can't show a single one of them here because I can't show violence, but they are extremely violent. This is a product of every Democrat telling black people they're victims, and slavery still affects them, and they need reparations, and white supremacists are everywhere. It's just not true. They're lying. They're always lying. They're pandering to young black people to make them feel like they're not equal, and they'll never succeed. It's the most cruel thing you can do to a person. So where does this end up? Well, there's some social commentators online that are taking notice of the violence, and they have had enough. Scott Adams is a household name. He writes the Dilbert comics. You know, I hate my job, my boss is a jerk, working in a cubicle sucks. He's that guy. Well, I guess he's finally had it, and he went a little unfiltered. So if, if you know, nearly half of all blacks uh, are not okay with white people, according to this poll, not according to me, according to this poll, 
uh, that's a hate group. That's a hate group. And I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Just get the fuck away. Get, where, wherever you have to go, just get away. Because there's no fixing this. This can't be fixed. Right? This can't be fixed. You just have to escape. So that's what I did. I went to a neighborhood where you know, I have a very low black population. Because unfortunately, the, you know, there's a high correlation between the density. And this is according to Don Lemon, by the way. Um, so here I'm just quoting Don Lemon. When, when he notes that the, when he lived in a uh, mostly black neighborhood, there were a bunch of problems that he didn't see in white neighborhoods. So even Don Lemon sees a big difference in your own quality of living based on where you live and who's there. So I, I think it makes no sense whatsoever as a uh, white citizen of America to try to help black citizens anymore. It doesn't make sense. It's no longer a rational impulse. And so I'm, I'm going uh, to back off from being helpful to black America because it doesn't seem like it pays off. Like, I've been doing it all my life, and I've been, the only outcome is I, be, I get called a racist. Most, and by most, this chart shows that over 50% of black people don't like white people. Adams states this very specifically, to stay away from black people. Now, whether you agree or not, we have to agree on some basic truths. Black Lives Matter burned down cities, and Kamala Harris set up bail funds to get them out of jail. Shoplifting in Democrat cities is now an acceptable crime, and there is no punishment. Throwing white people onto train tracks in New York City is now a weekly occurrence, and there's no stopping it. Black-on-black -black crime gun crime and specifically in Chicago is a daily event with hundreds of people killed every year and the number keeps going up. Now Mayor Lori Lightfoot is not going to stop the violence. She doesn't even acknowledge it exists. Democrats have created this problem. They've nurtured the problem. They will never solve the problem. Now after Scott Adams posted this video it was met with the expected reactions. Democrats were appalled and immediately called him racist. Brooklyn Dad Defiant, the paid Dem operator, said, quote, I'm not surprised he's a racist. Really? You're not surprised? You knew that by looking at what? His skin color? Hmm. Sounds a little racist. This is a typical Democrat. They just can't help themselves. Now, Adams might be right. There is no way to fix this. In cities where black people have been crowded into tiny apartments with bad schools, no jobs, well, because Democrat policies ran businesses away. Remember just a year or two ago when AOC told Amazon to leave Brooklyn? Well, that cost them thousands of jobs, good jobs. Democrats want them to be dependent on welfare and handouts. They don't want them to have jobs. Now, black people should be mad. They should revolt, but they need to direct all that anger at the right target. Democrats caused this problem, but promising more free money every year is a trick. They just give, they give just enough to keep everyone alive, but hopeless. So they vote Democrat again, hoping they'll just get a little more next year. It's more, but it's never enough. It's a cruel trap. It's way worse than slavery ever was. There are more black men in prison right now than during the peak of slavery. What does that tell you? Think about it for just a moment. Democrats want to keep you where you are. It's cruel. Stop falling for it. Stop voting Democrat. Can't you see they aren't helping? Everyone's life gets worse every time you act blue. Now, a few years ago, everyone had a job. Businesses were booming. Everyone was hiring. Gas prices were great. You could find eggs for about a dollar a dozen. Now, Biden gets to the White House. He tries to put oil companies out of business immediately. So how are you enjoying your gas prices? Heating bills? 
You shouldn't need to get a bank loan to buy an omelet. But here we are. All right, here's my opinion. Very stupid people are racist. Very stupid people listen to the news and believe they should hate their neighbor because skin color? If you take a moment to get to know someone, you'll find common ground most of the time. But too many people are too far gone. The media got them. The media is the enemy. Orange man bad. So should white people avoid black people? Well, Scott Adams thinks so. But is that a good solution? Will it solve the problem? Now, a lot of problems go away with accountability. If the black community feels helpless, like they have nothing left to lose, I, I understand how that can be frustrating. Punching white people and blaming random white people for your problems is not a solution. It's lazy racism, and it's making everything worse. You want to fix your community? I got a four-point plan. One, get married. Stay together and raise a family. Single moms and fatherless homes are horrible for the future. Two, homeschool your kids. Public schools are indoctrination camps. Three, do something. Now, this can be anything from cleaning trash on your street to starting a small online business or planting a rooftop garden. Learn how to trade stocks on Robinhood. You can learn everything you need to on YouTube and you only need a phone to set up your account. There's no barrier to entry and no one cares what color you are. And four, stop voting for Democrats. They have proved over the last 200 years they're working against you. What do you have to lose at this point? Get something that's worth protecting. Once you're successful, you won't need to blame anyone. You won't blame white people or the government. You'll be self-made. I know what doesn't work. Doing the same thing over and over. Speaking of predictable, do you know what happened to Scott Adams after his tweet? It's not hard to guess. They called him a racist and they canceled him. Everyone knows this is a serious problem. It's tearing the country apart. But you're not even allowed to talk about it? How on earth are we going to fix a problem if we can't even talk about it? I don't know what the big solution is, but if we do nothing, there will be more people like Scott Adams. They're going to get louder, and the separation will get bigger and bigger. Don't be surprised if we get segregation. That will be worse than anything in our past. Can you even imagine getting back to separate restaurants for whites and blacks? Does anybody really want that? Did you learn anything new today? I hope I could provide some info that made you reconsider a few things. If you found any value, please subscribe so I can bring more in the future. I got more videos coming later, so I'll see you soon.